What's going on everybody? We got a really cool question here today. This one says, hey, many people have been reaching out to me to help them stop smoking and vaping. Will you please share with me how you determine whether or not someone is that threshold? I'm having some trouble because some of the clients I thought were gonna be easy to work with were not, and some that I thought were gonna be really difficult surprised me. How do you make this determination? So I think this is a fantastic question. There's a lot to unpack here and explore. The first thing, I think the concept of threshold is cool, especially in the beginning. It's nice to have a decision-making matrix that you can evaluate prospective clients' responses based off of. However, I got away from that pretty early, and here's why. I started just to trust my own unconscious mind, but to be able to do that, I had to learn to listen to people differently. So I couldn't listen to them and try to evaluate their responses based off of a predetermined matrix. It was more about listening to that person to really understand them. And so when I was listening to that person to really understand them and I think about their behavior, it became a lot easier to tell whether or not I wanted to work with that person. So there's certain things I look out for but ultimately, that's a really great journey to be on. It's similar to how I work with them in a session too. So we're already doing the work without them knowing it. They're already starting to experience change because they're starting to look at things differently. They're starting to understand their problems differently. I'm, not just the problems, but that they're starting to find a level of motivation they didn't know they had or they couldn't previously access. This is a life-changing way to work with people and it makes the session work a lot easier too. I think that threshold approach is very useful in the beginning because it might filter out some of the folks that are more difficult to work with and that can help build some confidence if you're new to this because if you have a couple bad sessions in the beginning you might really start to question a lot of things and as great as the trainers in our industry are and I teach students the reality is there's no substitute for actual time on task in front of a client that's where and it's not always a comfortable way to learn but wow it's valuable and the most difficult clients I worked with I learned the most from them so there's that piece of it too, right? So in the beginning, don't beat yourself up because it's like, I'm just doing the easy ones or whatever, or having a higher standard, if we want to call it that, you're developing a lot of things in the background. And maybe you've worked a lot in one niche, but this is something new for you. Give yourself the freedom to take this as it comes in. I think that's really important. Don't put a bunch of pressure on yourself to, to work like everybody else, right? It's just good. You're running your own race here. So I love that. So I think that's the most important part of this for me. I, it's just as my hypnotic intuitions developed, it, I don't really even think about threshold anymore. I'm really just thinking about the person in front of me. And as I understand who they are, what they're about, their character, their behavior, you know, how they're thinking, I really want to understand how they're thinking. Once we get there, it's not I don't really get that concerned about whether or not they're at threshold. They'll usually weed themselves out anyway. I think this is another good point. Let's throw this in. I've been talking about one problem consistently for years though. So I do think the folks that decide to book with me, a lot of them have been following me for a while. They've been on a journey where now they're motivated and ready to take action. So you can, you can leverage your content for this type of thing too if you're in a specific niche. That's a real valuable piece to this. But in terms of whether or not someone's motivated or at threshold, even if you're not doing that, really take a step back and think about the client. That person's been dealing with this problem forever and they and motivation isn't a yes or no thing anyway, right? It's a continuum, right? It's not a binary. So they've been more motivated and less motivated at times in their life. They've been dealing with other things that they've focused on and this hasn't been a priority for them. They've had family members, people they care about the most, pester them about this, love them about this. Hey, I really want you to quit smoking. What about this? Think about what it's doing to your grandma, your kid, all these different things. They've had to deal with this sort of push and pull internally for so long, and now they're finally reaching out to you. I think it's important to appreciate that step they're making. Now, someone could just be doing it to explore, right? We use the phrase of a tire kicker. Sure, that could be a thing. But you, at some level of awareness, this person wants to make this change. So as we become very skilled at helping that person discover and explore that level of awareness, it makes this process easier. It really does. Well, I hope this helps. I know it's not as tactical. I like to be a little bit more tactical. I guess the application here or the summarization would be keep doing what you're doing. There's all kinds of stuff out there. People have these sort of matrices. but. I think in the background, it's to your advantage to really start to explore this other way of listening, the other way of communicating, 
that, that we talked about earlier, right? R really trying to understand the person in front of you. I think as you develop that skill, a lot of those concerns will go to the background. And if you're someone that just likes working in a more structured way and you like to have those checklists, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But I think your margin of error is going to go down significantly when you're focused on the person in front of you versus a checklist in the back of your mind. You'll really start to hear that person and you'll pick up on things that you're like, I got, wow, that's incredible. So it's a powerful thing. Thank you so much for this question. Please keep them coming, folks. If anybody else has this stuff, I love diving into this. Take care, everybody.